Setting aside some of the complexities associated with the positions in the sign hierarchy, which is manifested in the architecture, the design of the higher cortex, consider the facts that we know. For one, the dominant hemisphere, which is usually the left hemisphere, specializes in producing the highly articulated sequences of words in speaking, writing, and manual signing, whereas the subordinate hemisphere specializes in handling sensory impressions, which it communicates with the dominant hemisphere through the corpus callosum. Meanwhile, just as Einstein put it back in 1941, the commutable signs of language, strings of words, have to be linked with the impressions, the sensory impressions of physical reality, through a process that I've called pragmatic mapping. It's the process by which strings of words are mapped into sensory impressions through the actions of the dominant hemisphere communicated through the corpus callosum to the subordinate hemisphere and at the same time produced in strings of words that are pragmatically mapped to sensory impressions of the world of experience. All of that action in producing those strings of words takes place by free will just as Roger Sperry pointed out. At the same time, the sensory impressions are being handled by the subordinate hemisphere, the strings of words are being handled by the dominant hemisphere, and in the red zone, in between, voluntary movements are being coordinated by the dominant hemisphere through the corpus callosum with the subordinate hemisphere being under the control of the dominant hemisphere.